Picture this. If you randomly dropped a pin anywhere on a map of Australia, there's a 95% chance it would land in a place where absolutely nobody lives. That's right. The entire continent of Australia, roughly the same size as the United States, has less population than the state of Texas. Australia is home to just 26 million people. And here's the mind-blowing part. Almost all of them live within 50 kilometers of the coast. If you've ever wondered why such a massive country feels so empty, you're about to discover the incredible forces of nature that shaped one of the most extreme examples of human settlement on Earth. Let's start with the elephant in the room, the Australian outback. This isn't just empty land we're talking about. It's a harsh, unforgiving wilderness that covers about 70% of the continent. Imagine an area larger than the entire country of India, where temperatures regularly soar above 50 degrees Celsius, where rainfall is so scarce that some regions go years without seeing a single drop of water. The heart of Australia is dominated by what geographers call the Great Western Plateau. This ancient landmass is so old that it predates complex life on Earth. Over millions of years, weathering has stripped away fertile topsoil, leaving behind nutrient-poor sand and rock. It's like nature's own version of a parking lot, except it stretches for thousands of kilometers in every direction. But heat and poor soil are just the beginning. Australia sits in what's known as the subtropical high-pressure belt. This creates a natural barrier that pushes rain clouds away from the interior. While coastal areas benefit from ocean moisture, the center of the continent exists in a permanent rain shadow. Some weather stations in central Australia record less than 200 millimeters of rainfall per year. To put that in perspective, that's less water than London gets in just two months. Now, you might think early European settlers would have pushed inland anyway, but they quickly learned what Aboriginal Australians had known for 65,000 years. Survival in the interior requires incredible skill and intimate knowledge of the land. The Aboriginal people developed sophisticated techniques for finding water and navigating the seemingly endless Red Desert, but even they lived in relatively small, mobile groups. When British colonists arrived in 1788, they naturally settled along the fertile eastern coast, where rivers provided fresh water and soil could support agriculture. As the population grew, people followed the coastline rather than venturing inland. This pattern created what demographers call the Australian Coastal Rim, a narrow band of civilization hugging the edge of an enormous empty center. The numbers are staggering when you break them down. Sydney's metropolitan area alone contains more than 5 million people, while the entire Northern Territory, an area larger than France, Germany, and the United Kingdom combined, has fewer than 250,000 residents. Darwin, the capital of this vast territory, has roughly the same population as a mid-sized American suburb. Modern technology hasn't changed this equation much either. Sure, we have air conditioning and water trucks, but the fundamental challenges remain. Building infrastructure across such distances is enormously expensive. A single highway crossing the Nullarbor Plain stretches for over 1,600 kilometers with virtually nothing along the way. Imagine driving from New York to Miami and seeing maybe three small towns the entire journey. The mining industry has created some inland settlements, but even these are often temporary. Companies fly workers in and out, rather than building permanent communities. Towns like Cooper Pedy, famous for underground homes built to escape the heat, have populations measured in hundreds, not thousands. Water remains the ultimate limiting factor. Australia is the driest inhabited continent on Earth. The Murray-Darling River system supports most of the country's agriculture, but it's concentrated in the southeast corner. Groundwater exists in some inland areas, but it's often too deep, too salty, or too expensive to extract for large-scale settlement. Climate change is making these challenges even more extreme. Rising temperatures and changing rainfall patterns are pushing the habitable zones even closer to the coast. What was once marginal land for grazing is becoming completely unusable. So next time you see Australia on a map, Remember, you're looking at one of geography's most dramatic examples of how climate and landscape shape human settlement. Those 26 million people aren't spread out because they're antisocial. They're clustered together because 95% of their continent is one of the most challenging environments on Earth for human habitation. It's a testament to both the power of nature and human adaptability that anyone lives there at all.